Welcome to Boss Babes Chat. Uh, this is where we talk about different things in our life and our business and it's a place where you can ask questions and learn different things. <laughs> and so my name is Brittany Porter. I am a spiritual coach and energy healer. And today we're, oh hey Sarah, <laughs> today, and if you're watching this on YouTube, by the way, I'm talking to people in TikTok right now, <laughs> uh, my peeps. So we're going to be talking about the death and rebirth process and processing your emotions and what that looks like. And I want to share my experience of what happened to me like an hour ago <laughs> or an hour and a half ago. Um, so I could, um, or you can get a real time depiction of what this looks like and some of the tools that I've picked up that I not only help myself with, but my clients with. Uh, so for the last couple of days, Oh, hey, I finally caught your live again. Hey, Mitzi. <laughs> so not for the last couple of days. For the last couple of weeks, I have been going through this really big uh, timeline shifting moment where I'm stepping into this new version of myself. And this is something that has happened over and over and over again. Like I'm a new person every day. Um, let me know if that resonates with y'all. <laughs> Put like a one in the chat or an emoji if you're just like a new whole person and metamorphosis every day. Um, anyway. So the last month or so, like I took a lot of time off from doing like lives and workshops and things like that because I needed to recenter and figure out what I'm going to do moving forward. Not only just in my business, but my like life, like what do I want to talk about? What do I want to help people with? You know, how do I want to present myself? How do I want to convey myself? <laughs> Okay. Um, I, you know, have been very solid in my self-confidence and self-esteem, but then we go through these shift moments when we level up and it starts to really make you question like what you're doing, who you are, right? It's you shifting to this bigger version of yourself. And, but you also have to kind of look at the same time, like what's not working, what are the behavioral patterns that are keeping me here at this level? Well, there's nothing wrong with like levels, right? But sometimes we want to make those shifts, but there's these things that are holding us back. <laughs> and sometimes it's self. Uh, I feel like I'm more and more myself as I peel these layers off society standards. I love that so much. <laughs> Demasking and decapitalizing, <laughs> um, de -society. Uh So anyway, <laughs> I get off track really easily, I apologize. Uh, so with the shifting, I am making big shifts in my life and my business. And like, I'm, I don't want to say like pushing myself, but pushing myself to go outside of my comfort zone and do things I haven't ever done before. And that's really scary. That's very intimidating. Hey cat, very intimidating because it's like the unknown, like what's going to happen. And I've gotten really good at not seeing anything as a failure. Like if I flop on my face, like great then I know what I can do different next time and not to hinge my success on one event or one version of myself, right? So that leaves space for me to kind of wiggle around and reality transurfing, <laughs> okay? And then not be such like a big hit if something doesn't go exactly as I planned because can't control everything and it takes fun out of it. Like I've had to heal some very deep wounds of controlling my reality and self because when I was younger, I didn't feel safe in my reality. Like I, I just grew up with a lot of trauma stuff. And so that created a very hypervigilant person that needed to control everything, right? OCD, <laughs> not OCD necessarily with, you know, like the typical things, but more like my intrinsic values and self, right? But then you kind of close off the windows of opportunity to the universe. Usually, like, no, it's gotta be this one thing, this one way. We gotta do this one thing. So at the beginning of this, what is this? February? Okay, at the beginning of January, <laughs> I had all these plans for my upcoming month and the year. And then all of a sudden, my higher oh thank you for the follow. My higher self came in and was like, Yeah, we're gonna scrap all that. We're not doing any of that. And it was not, I don't wanna say like devastating, but I had this like whole agenda in my head, and I was like, we're gonna rock it this year and this is what we're gonna do and like you know I had everything like planned out and then it was just like okay well we're not doing that <laughs> and my like worlds are like crumbling in on itself and I don't, has that happened to anybody before <laughs> let me know if you had something like that and then the universe was just like yeah we're gonna pivot <laughs> and so I had to take a step back reevaluate and decide what's in alignment what's not in alignment Okay, just said, oh yes. <laughs> like, we're just doing something completely different. 
And so I have been feeling very stressed and anxious recently just because there's a lot of shifts coming up. And I know that's for a lot of pe other people too. There's 2023 is the year of the shifts. <laughs> okay, we, we're all shifting into this more magical, wonderful frequency of life. But that also means that you have to like let go of these old versions of you and old ways of doing things. And even though that's for your benefit, sometimes like it's still scary, especially you have inner children within you that didn't have safety. And so they're inside freaking out. Okay. So the last couple of days I have been, one, I was getting over being sick. Like I was very sick, but it was ascension symptoms and stuff. But anyway, so my body has been hurting really badly the last couple of days. Like my muscles are on like lockdown and I thought it was from me getting over being sick. And about an hour and a half ago, I was like, you know what? I am pushing myself too hard and working too hard and there's only so much stuff you could do in the 3d like things take time there right like it's very dense it takes a long time to manifest things <laughs> okay. and I'm sitting here trying to figure out what more can I do and my higher self is like you need to stop you can't do any more in the 3d we really just need you to lay down <laughs> and go within because the answers are in there <laughs> and I was like okay well we'll do that <laughs> and so I lay down and I was asking uh, my higher self to take me through my Akashic records and my soul contract with my inner kids and I was like okay we obviously need to clear out something here like we're stuck up because when you're stressed and anxious your imagination and creativity go out the window and it blocks up your channels to your spirit guides and your higher self and all this stuff and like it's just like I've been looking through this lens of fogginess like I can't figure things out or have new ideas come in and I'm just like locked up with stress <laughs> uh the ascension symptoms can be absolutely be a riot you need to stop yeah yeah oh hey Sean thank you so I'm gonna tell you what happened so I'm laying down and I go into my Akashic Records and I asked to go to this uh, Lumerian crystal craves. I don't know if anybody's privy to that, but it's this healing space in the etheric realm. <laughs> and so I go there and I'm looking at my physical body in the crystal caves. And then I ask my inner children to help me, the higher self, heal Brittany. Okay. <laughs> and so we're looking at my physical body because I'm not just Brittany, you know, I'm a multi dimensional being. There's different versions of me. So I kind of took myself out of my reality to look at it objectively and so she's laying like on this table and I say okay what do we need to do here we need to do some type of hey Brit, we need to do some type of releasing so I started doing Reiki and light language on myself and let me tell you what happened <laughs> so I there's there's a piece of me I've been in that place that I live now for five years and I've been wanting to move like I love where I live now and I manifested this and I've trying to been I've trying to been trying to be better about being happy with where I am at right now and stop looking so far down into the future because there's a version of me that manifests this right and so sitting in happiness where you're at will also help you shift <laughs> so being at peace with the things I already manifested but it seems like there's like a block okay and I don't even like using the word block like filter like there's something going on and so my inner child popped up and I'm sharing these things because it might resonate with y'all and <laughs> maybe it'll help y'all so my inner child pops up and says I don't want to move and I said okay well why don't you want to move and she said because this place makes me feel safe and I haven't felt safe in a long time like for the majority of my life when I was in fight or flight 24 seven and not in safe spaces. And I said, Oh, okay. I understand that. I was like, our apartment loves us very much. We, you know, we're always here. We bring a lot of joy and happiness and like we've infused our energy into it and it does feel very safe here. And I said, but we, you know, if we move somewhere else, that doesn't mean that that place isn't going to feel safe, but it wasn't that she had like created a relationship with the energy of the home. 
And so I said, we can just ask the home energy to come with us. Like, we don't have to like leave it behind. Like, and I want you to think about the family that's gonna come in here after us. Like they are going to enjoy all of this wonderful energy that we have been pouring in here for the last five years. Like it's gonna be amazing for them. They're gonna feel so loved and so safe and just connected. You know, they're gonna they're gonna feel amazing in here. I'm gonna fix my screen really quick because it's all fuzzy. One second. Um oh there it is. No. No, I don't wanna end it. Okay, there we go. And <laughs> so when I said that to her of we're not losing something, we can take it with us and you'll still be safe and secure when we move because I've got you and we can just take the, take the home energy with us. <laughs> she was like, oh, okay. And then she felt a lot better about releasing that, right? Oh my God, I needed this day. I've been getting cold feet about moving to Texas. Yay. Okay. I knew somebody needed to hear this. Hey, Ray. Hey. Um, so I'm talking about death and rebirth right now. <laughs> so that's, that's a death process though of like her grieving us letting go of this old reality because I've been here for a quote unquote long time, like five years. Like that's a lot. Like your home space is, is a part of you you are constantly imbuing your energy into it it's like just like your car it's actually like an extension of you <laughs> and so she thought we were just gonna leave all that stuff behind or maybe she felt like she was gonna get left behind I was like we all going together <laughs> okay um hi I'm late are you moving yes I am moving but I was talking about how there's been some type of like energy that's needing to be released in order for me to do that and it was because my inner child was like, oh no, we can't move because that means we won't be safe. So then, this is like a whole whirlwind in 20 minutes. Like I had a 20 minute timer on. Okay, so we did that and <laughs> talked to her. Then I had, hey, then I had, now this is going to be a little bit, this might be triggering for people. So like if passing, people passing is going to trigger you, you may want to step out of the chat. I just want to give a heads up, okay? So I have two friends who have passed to the other side, who have transitioned to the other side. One from a long time ago, from in high school, and then one like two years ago. And I have made peace with that. And I talked to, oh, thank you, Shana, hey. I have talked to the one that passed on not too recently ago. I talked to him still from the other side, but I haven't done that with my friend from high school before it was so long ago and my inner child in past Brittany was like still very much in the grieving process and I realized that I hadn't given them enough time to grieve that because when those things happened I was going through some trauma myself and so I kind of had to shove it down and I still grieve through it but not like I needed to and so I said, thank you so much for showing me that. I didn't realize that we were still hurting that deeply about those things. And so I acknowledged her pain. I'm, I'm trying not to cry right now, but I acknowledged their pain. And I said, it's totally fine that you feel that way and let's feel it together, okay? I want you to feel safe to show me these things and I'm gonna be here to process them with you. Okay, so now <laughs> we go to I'm making this transition where I'm still helping people like individually like in my coaching business but I'm really making this big pivot to help spiritual entrepreneurs because that's like that's the pivot <laughs> is from earlier that I was talking about that I was like oh we're gonna do this now so the younger version of me was like that wasn't the plan that's what she said to me and I said well you know we don't have to do anything just because spirit or our higher self says, Hey, this is what you should do. We don't have to do that. We have free will and we choose what we do. And then I talked her through that and she really actually wanted to do it, but it was the control thing of like, no, we said we were going to do this. Then I started going down further into the root of it and it's proving myself to myself into other people and extrinsic extrinsic things 
needing to prove our worth to us. Like whether that's, you know, financial wealth or getting people in my program or, you know, whatever. And I really had to have this chat with her and I said, none of that stuff matters. Like literally none of that matters. Nothing matters if you do not feel worthy inside because you're coming from a place and you're creating from that place. And so we really had to sit together with that and, you know, help her process through those feelings. It's a little bit easier because I'm sitting in there as the higher self talking to her about these old behavioral patterns that me sitting where I'm at right this second have moved through, but she hasn't released fully yet. And so I had to have like a coaching, <laughs> healing, uh, sit down with her and walk her through that, right? Then... Uh, another version of my of myself. This this was happening real quick. <laughs> Yesterday, I ran into somebody from my past, from old Brittany's life, that uh, hurt me very deeply. And at the time, I thought it was a huge betrayal. And in that lens, it was. It was a backstabbing type of situation energy. Now looking at it from where I sit. I know why that happened because that person needed to be out of my life for me to move forward because it was keeping me in this lower deep denser frequency and I probably was for them too <laughs> okay but and that's the thing sometimes with both of you <laughs> okay so I ran into them and immediately went into uh, that old way of being Right, and it was really weird because I was like talking to myself at the same time that my body started going into fight or flight and I was like, listen, we're not that person, we're not in that space anymore. We have made peace with that and we have forgiven them. And I said, but you're still valid for your feelings and I will come back to that later. We will talk about it later. Now the, not mistake I made, but I didn't come back to it. And my younger versions know that if I say I'm going to come back and process something with you, I'm going to come back. But this time I didn't. I forgot. Or maybe subconsciously didn't want to. And so she brought that up in my face or my face and was like, you said you were going to talk to me about it. And so I, I had to apologize to her and say, I'm really sorry. I did not realize how deeply that was still hurting you. And you're completely valid in those feelings because it was a horrible situation. And let's talk about it. And so we talked it out. And I apologized. Because if you say you're going to do something, you need to do something. <laughs> okay. So then... Um, I was taken to, when I was like four or five years old, I used to get up on stage at this nursing home where my grand, where my great grandmother was. My grandpa was a preacher. Okay. And he would take me there to sing in front of everybody. This was when I was like four or five, I had a microphone and I was seeing all these like songs for them and they would, loved it. They loved it. They were like, <laughs> I was like a celebrity that used to come in there. Somewhere along, and I, I used to love doing that, somewhere along the way, I had been like dismissed in my life over and over and over again because nobody caught that I was on the spectrum and nobody caught that I was neuro, like I had ADHD or an empath or a light worker. And so I was constantly told to dim my light and that I was too much and that I needed to be quiet. And I also grew up in like an oppressive kind of like childhood situation. And so this little girl who like loved shining her light was just dimmed over and over and over and over again. And so when she showed me that memory, I was like, why are you showing me that memory? I was like, thank you. <laughs> and she said, I really like being on stage and I like, you know, bringing people joy. And I went to an Elton John concert a couple months ago, his last tour, it was amazing. <laughs> But I saw him up on stage and my higher self was like, that's going to be you. you. That's you. Like, you are going to do that. And not, you know, be on gone. But, <laughs> but like at that level. And something within me completely shrunk up and was like, oh no. No, I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. And 
through talking to my inner child, I realized like, oh, I've really enjoyed that actually the whole time. But it's other things that have happened to me in my life that have put these lenses over me saying, oh no, you don't really need to do that. You don't actually like that. Putting yourself out there means that you're going to be persecuted and that you are going to, you know, be made fun of or people are going to say you're too much or you don't know what you're talking about. You know, all this stuff that's not really in resonance with my soul. But that little girl inside, she was like, I love this. She was like, I love being in front of people and shining my light. And I remember, and I don't know if Ray, if you're still in here, I was talking to uh, one of my friends the other day and I said, oh, she said something. I said, that reminds me of the song, This Little Light of Mine. That was my favorite song growing up. And then I kind of like pulled away from it because I had a religious trauma and I was like, I don't want anything to do with that. And I was like, you know what? Let's sing that together. I said, I would love to sing that. And so me and her were on the stage together and we're singing our hearts out. Just, it was such a beautiful moment. And I realized that she needed that release. And I did too. And I was just like bawling my eyes out for like 20 minutes. And I realized like when you have these death and rebirth processes, sometimes you get a lot of this, um, pent up energy in you that makes you feel really dense and sluggish and it makes it hard to perceive your future timelines and I'm really good at processing my emotions right but sometimes like I don't catch it every time and sometimes things are just like slowly building but like I had to get to a point where I was so frustrated and so anxious and stressed and my higher self was like you, literally nothing will work for you until you sit down and do this. Hey, Carrie. <laughs> like, she was like, you are so blocked up right now. And it's not your fault. There's just, like, things that have been, like, piling up. And my inner kids and my past versions, like, they needed this release to move forward. Like, I had to sit down and coach and honor them and tell them that they're seen and validated for their feelings and that they're loved and I needed to process that stuff through my body because sometimes we don't want to do that because it hurts like it emotionally hurt while I was doing that it was very intense and it but I could feel the energy coming out of my body I could just it was coming up out of me and it was coming up out of them too and you know I haven't been ignoring them. Like I talk to my inner children all the time, every day. <laughs> we talk every day. But sometimes you do need to have these like really intense, cathartic, I'm gonna look at all these self-limiting beliefs. And that's what I told him when I first started, when we first got in there. I was like, I want y'all to tell me all the self-limiting beliefs. I, let's, let's go through every single one. And it's not gonna feel good when you're doing it because it's gonna make, make you face your shadow. But if you don't know what those things are or you keep shoving them down and that's what like when you get further down your spiritual awakening journey, <laughs> let me know if anybody this resonates. If you're really good at catching your self-limiting beliefs, so like when they pop up, I immediately like say something to them. But oh, thank y'all for the follow. But <laughs> they get really subtle, like very, very subtle. And they come at you in the form of energy instead. You don't actually hear them in your voice, in your head anymore. And that's something that I've realized that I've moved into the next stage where it's not words anymore. It's I have to feel those things on a frequency level. And when my body starts feeling a certain way, it's time that we need to do like a deep cleanse, clear out. Um, I've started noticing them a more more lately and I'm able to flip them around. I love that. Hey, hey Michelle. Um, and I'm not saying I don't ever have those, you know, words and things come up in my mind, but now it's, it now it's more energy. Yeah. Uh, Carrie, yes. <laughs> Sounds like it happened to you too. And so that was a lesson for me of, it doesn't always need to be words. It's like, these are things that are, you know, working on an energetic scale in our chakra system, in our meridian lines, in our auric field, in our light body. It doesn't always have to come at you in the form of language in your mind. 
in your in like self limiting beliefs. Sometimes it's just the way you feel, and sometimes you need to have that release. So after the cry fest <laughs> and talking to all my inner children, uh, those stress hormones don't just go away. You have to do something to get them out of your body. Now I did that through like crying and releasing and talking to them, but now my physical body needs to do something to get the cortisol out. I did it on an energetic level, but not a physical level. And so I said, okay, I know we don't feel like doing this right now because we feel like dookie, but we're gonna go do a hip hop dance workout because I've been re-parenting my inner kids and my younger versions and telling them doing dance workouts is a reward. It is something fun. It is not something that we push off because we don't like if we, because you need to do that with your inner kids. If you're doing inner child healing, you're doing very deep trauma work, you need to do something fun afterwards because it needs to be a positive interaction and a positive reward for doing that. And so I said, okay, well, we're gonna go do a hip hop video. <laughs> and so we went and danced and then I felt a million times better afterwards. And then I stretched kind of like a meditation stretch and felt so much better. I feel so much better now. I feel clear, like all my channels are clear, my meridian lines are clear, chakras, my my mind is clear, but I had let it kind of get too much, <laughs> okay? And I kind of like tricked myself into thinking like, well, I haven't had self limiting beliefs come up, so obviously there's nothing off. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> there's something off and sometimes you just need to have those sessions with yourself soul alignment sessions okay <laughs> and it's okay to feel your feelings and it's okay to process them and we can't always process them in the moment like that's not always convenient like yesterday when I got triggered from seeing that person it was not the time or place but then you need to make time for it because otherwise it will come out eventually in the form of a breakdown or things just going off kilter or off skew or things getting really chaotic in your life, right? It will come out. And so luckily today I listened to my higher self and my intuition. And I was like, okay, well, we're just going to sit down and we're going to do it right now because I have time and I'm not going to push it off and I'm not going to do some type of numbing behavior to keep pushing it off and I realized I've been on TikTok a lot in the last couple of days which there's nothing wrong with that but I've been doom scrolling and I realized that I was utilizing that as a numbing behavior for my stress and anxiety it, be, and it was it, <laughs> it was a little more difficult to catch because I was like no I've been doing all these other things to like keep me in balance no sometimes you'd be lying to yourself you see what I'm saying <laughs> Okay, so I wanted to share my experience and the story in case it resonates with anybody because this is what like the death and rebirth process looks like in order to, you know, traverse through these things. And um, when we're releasing these old versions of us, it's not like permanently deleting them. It's just helping them release so they can integrate at a deeper level. Like my inner kids had a lot to say, <laughs> okay, in my past versions. And my higher self was like, you want to go to the next level? Then you need to, <laughs> you need to help these kids in here. <laughs> okay. Um, did you do this during meditation? Yes. I sat and um, I laid on my bed and I put a timer on for 20 minutes. And I asked my higher self to take me into my Akashic Records with my inner kids. And then the Crystal Caves to do some healing. And then it, all of it just started rolling in very quickly. Um, can you see other people's spiritual abilities? Uh, yes and no. It depends because some people's abilities on your soul contract are supposed to unlock, oh, thank you for the follow, are supposed to unlock at certain pivotal times in your life. And so I can see what your higher self and over soul and guides show me. Like sometimes I'm not meant to tell all of them. So I always like tell people that like I can tell you like some of them, but you probably have like a plethora of <laughs> gifts. But if you're not at that space on your journey yet, or your consciousness hasn't opened up 
or you haven't experienced something that you need to to have that key unlock. So it's, it depends, <laughs> right? But I can I can see what your higher self and your oversoul, your guides, show me. <laughs> so yes, no. Um, okay. So thank you all for coming to this chat today. I hope it um, helped or uh, resonated with somebody or maybe helps you through your process. It sounded like it did. It sounded like there's a lot of people in the chat that are going through very similar things. And sometimes you need a permission slip from somebody else to say like, hey, it's okay to feel your feelings and it's okay to feel like boo-boo sometimes. And it's okay to not know what you're doing or not know all the answers. Like, it's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to put this up on YouTube. If you weren't here for the whole thing and I have one from yesterday if y'all want to watch it's about imposter syndrome it says boss babes chat imposter syndrome and I get real deep into that um, and so that's available also boss babes inspire the coaching program that I was referencing that I'm starting in March that uh, the wait list is open if you want to participate it's for spiritual business owners if you have a business already or if you want to start a business it's for people that are going through things like this and you don't want to do it alone because it's a lot to process your stuff <laughs> while trying to help other people process their stuff and figure out all the things you need to do to run a successful business. It's a lot. <laughs> so I wanted to start a community where people can come together and learn and grow with one another and have support and ask me questions directly. <laughs> uh, but the waitlist is open. You can go to my profile, click, or you can go down here in the description below on YouTube and it's open. I also have a Money and Magic Masterclass that's coming up on the 15th. We're gonna talk a lot more in depth about the things that I was just talking about, like timeline shifting, accessing your Akashic Records, how to manifest more money, but not just money, like how manifesting works on a quantum level, right? Because there's a lot of moving parts within that as well, like healing your inner children, trauma releasing, healing your money mindset, self-worth and self-confidence. Like there's a lot of different things that go into that. It's a three day masterclass because it's so much information. I cannot fit it all into one day. Um, so that is open. Um, more info in the description and up here in my bio link.